Hi, I'm Carl Azus. We are wrapping up the week here on CNN Tang, your daily overview of world events. And of course, we're always happy to have you watching. The U.S. House of Representatives just held a hearing on the issue of discrimination and violence against Asian Americans. Experts say these problems have been increasing since the coronavirus pandemic began early last year. The disease outbreak started in China, and Chinese Americans have been the group targeted the most frequently in the U.S. That's according to the nonprofit social organization Stop AAPI Hate, AAPI standing for Asian American Pacific Islander Communities. It says it's received roughly 3,800 complaints of harassment and violence against Asian Americans since March 19th of last year. That's when Stop AAPI Hate began tracking this information, so it doesn't have perspective on how that compares to the year 2019 before the pandemic. It also says most of the complaints it's received are not hate crimes, that 68% of them are reports of verbal harassment, 20% involved what the group called shunning or avoidance, and 11% included physical assault. But experts say hate crimes against Asian Americans did increase by almost 150% last year in American cities, and the House hearing aimed to address the recent surge in discrimination as well as the history of what's been directed at Asian Americans, which dates back to the 1800s. A hate crime is defined as a criminal offense motivated by bias or prejudice. Now, hate itself is not a crime, and hate speech is protected by the First Amendment. The term hate crime only came into common use in the 1980s, but those kinds of crimes, of course, existed long before we used this official label for them. Laws to protect against what we now call hate crimes didn't come around until the 1960s. Propelled by the Civil Rights Movement, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 paved the way for the first federal hate crime legislation in 1968. There you go. All right. It was the Hate Crimes Prevention Act of 2009 that added federal protections against crimes committed on the basis of gender, disability, and sexual orientation. As far as tracking hate crimes, the FBI didn't even begin doing that until the 1990s, following the passage of the Hate Crime Statistics Act of 1990. Hate crimes cannot be tolerated in a free society. But when we try to understand just how many of these crimes are being committed, we see that the data is incomplete for a lot of reasons. The Department of Justice notes most hate crimes themselves are not reported to law enforcement. Victims are sometimes afraid to report these types of crimes. And for the crimes that are reported, it can be challenging to prove an offender's intent. On top of that, the very definition of what a hate crime is varies from state to state. Which of these scientific discoveries was confirmed in 1758? Halley's Comet, Gravity, Bernoulli's Principle, or Penicillin? Even though Edmund Halley died in 1742, his prediction that the famous comet would return came true in 1758. Scientists say that back in October 2017, the first interstellar object that's ever been observed flew through our solar system. They estimated it was traveling at 196,000 miles per hour, and since then, it has disappeared. But they've continued to study and try to understand it ever since. At first, researchers thought it could have been a comet, but in comparing it to another interstellar comet, this one, they found that the new object had a mysterious tumbling motion as it flew and that it didn't have a cometary tail. Now, there's a new theory that the pancake-shaped object was part of a dwarf planet like Pluto that somehow broke off from another solar system and traveled near ours. This object is simply a piece of another solar system that was expelled and it has been traveling through interstellar space for hundreds of millions of years, billions of years, we don't know.
We don't see that in our solar system. None of the asteroids in our solar system look like that. So it's very puzzling how it could have obtained this shape. We're taking you on a trip down US-1 today. It's also known as the Overseas Highway that connects mainland Florida with Key West. In the early 20th century, this was the route of Henry Flagler's Overseas Railroad that connected the Keys. But after that was partially destroyed by the Labor Day hurricane of 1935, a highway was built over the railroad. And since it was completed in 1938, it's allowed drivers to access the southernmost point in the United States. Here's CNN 10 contributor Chris James. Hey Carl, as I've told you before, I am a huge fan of road trips. You know, sunglasses on, windows down, blasting the music as high as you can, nothing beats it. So for today's virtual field trip, I am taking you on one of the most incredibly beautiful highways in the country. This is the Overseas Highway, which takes you from the mainland of Florida all the way to Key West, which is the southernmost point of the continental United States. The road is 112 miles long, and for much of the drive, you literally have a 360 degree view of the ocean on both sides of the car. The Florida Keys are a collection of small islands that curve outwards into the Atlantic Ocean. While most people make this trip with the eventual goal of getting to Key West, there are plenty of other cool stops along the way. If you are like me and you're interested in discovering places that are a bit off the beaten path, one stop you can make is in Marathon, Florida, Legend has it that this city got its name from the workers who put in massive labor to build a railroad through the Keys. The work, they said, was a real marathon. Get it? <laughs> the name stuck, and today you can go there to visit the Turtle Hospital. Now, another really cool stop on this drive is in Key Largo. This is one of the best spots in the world for scuba divers. A few miles offshore, the sandy ocean floor is filled with natural and man-made reefs and the skeletons of historic shipwrecks. Jules's Undersea Lodge is the self-proclaimed world's first underwater hotel. After checking in, guests have to dive 8.5 meters into their rooms. Now the highlight of this day is having a pizza or lobster dinner delivered to the room by a scuba diver. And if you're like me and don't know how to scuba dive, the hotel also offers beginner's lessons. Back to you, Carl. <laughs> Virtual museum tours have seen an uptick since this COVID thing happened, but how many of them do you get to control yourself? Here's one. The Art Gallery at Virginia's Old Dominion University wanted to offer tours for people at home, so they invented Gordon, which is kind of like a Segway with an iPad on it. And for $15 or less for ODU students, people can remotely operate Gordon, taking a virtual and robotic tour through the gallery. One interesting and a museum segue and remote of transportation to rover around venue can't gallerially be there to canvas the site at Art Appreciation. That's like a curated collage of puns that decorates our show this Friday because Fridays are artsome. I'm Carl Azus and it's time for us to park for the weekend. With Villa Park High School, it's located in Villa Park, California. That's a wrap, my friends, for CNN.